What is going on, guys? Welcome to week number nine. Big 12 team, Brother Dynasty. You're number four. Let's number one going. against number three, Ardmore against Denver Tech. The last time they were here, we beat them. And now it's time to make sure that we get this W because we got big goals, big aspirations in sight. Um, but uh, uh, what? Tackle him. Tackle him. Let's go. This is not a good start. Little All shaky, right. little shaky start. Alex Makovich sort of playing himself out of the Heisman race, trying to get back into it with a marquee game here. And this is Napoleon McQueen, oh, who God. now finds himself in that very same race. Oh, God. And he might score, but Carl Boyd is going to push him out at the three-yard line. So, of course, the one guy that had to come across the left side of the field in order to make that tackle, and he's a defensive back. Made that tackle. Anthony Jacobs gets the tech for a loss. So third and goal situation. And we get oh. a stop. No, Elliot Hushka uses the body momentum and gets the hand over the line. The football did cross. And he falls on his calf, so not wow. down at the one yard line. Pretty close, but he actually made a smart play, smart move to fall into the end zone. Wow. So the CPU is learning. It's learning. It's got AI written all over it. Couple passes here complete. First downs, back to back. First downs for Ardmore. Little play action pass complete here to Jake Wood. Power in his way through. Oh. oh, yeah. Go, man, go. We got some blockers out in front. And Jake Wood going to go for 46 on just a little flat route. He turns this thing up for 46 yards. You guys can't tackle him, man. He's got that unfair speed from Jake Wood at fullback. Here's Guerrero, the oh, tall nice running back, down at the... Unreal. Down at the one. So he... He's not, not as aware as Elliot Hushka. And then Brent Guerrero is going to score here for the zero yard touchdown. So you do manage to tie up this football game. Yes, good comeback here for the Thunderwolves. But Denver Tech is not going uh -oh. away, man. Napoleon McQueen again with another 20 plus yard run. Now it's gonna be third and two and a good stop here for the Thunderwolves. Makovich now four of five after that incompletion. But Dragosevic gonna kick this one up and good. That's a long field goal, and he's just automatic, Mr. Automatic here. So 10 to seven, Xavier Wiggins gets one of his first touches of the game, gonna turn this up for 11. Pass complete here to Vinny Peck, really good throw in coverage by John Hicks for 12. All right, Hicks running play action, gonna roll out to the right. And he's got a lot of green and a lot of white numbers and a lot of arrows pointing towards the end zone. Yes, yes. 25 yards. Get 25 yards right there. Second and 10, play action with the corner. Blitz coming Down. on its way. Vinny Peck is in for a touchdown. That's 25 yards through the air. And Hicks is now six of six. That rhymed. Four, six. And I don't know how he saw this guy, but wide open. Vinny Peck right there in the corner. I'm surprised Peck didn't get pushed out of the one-yard line. Yeah. I mean, he was asking for it. Good Here's point. Alex Brewer delivering a stiff arm. Picks up a nice 21-yard gain. Now Makovich in the shotgun get on second and 16, throwing off balance, and the ball goes doink right there. Third and 16 now, and screen. Screen pass. And, oh, I was going to say, I was going to hope that we were going to able to make some good tackles right there. Luckily, we did. Streeter hoping that it wasn't going to go through, but it's, it's Colton Degrosevich, man. He's, he's got a huge leg. Probably best kicker in the league in the conference. Third, third and five. Third and five, yep. And then Xavier Wiggins going to go out of bounds. Not a very good throw by Hicks to lead the receiver. And here's an opponent. Oh, point. not going down. He is just He's just going off right now on this weak Ardmore defense here, guys. 14-13 still, and here is McQueen. Going to get 10 more, second and seven. Can't stop the run. Makovich takes a big hit, but he's going to get six yards. Here's Jason Williams wow. coming on the, on the blitz, and he reads it perfectly, does not fall for the bait, and he takes Makovich down, and Coulter Dragosevich is only going to be so good for so long. He's going to miss this field goal, and then Hicks turns the ball over on the next drive. So not a good throw by him. I don't think he saw him sitting there at the midfield logo. But either way, it will be Denver Tech's football going the other way here. We get a flag on Anthony Jacobs for a face mask call. Not cool. 
Not cool, man. We gotta be more disciplined right here. This is the number three team in the nation. You can't give oh. them extra opportunities. And McKinney comes up with the forced fumble. And Russell Lake, the defensive lineman, is gonna go all the way, guys. So one turnover by Hicks. Now we get this turnover on Denver Tech. We take the lead. Uncharacteristic turnover there for McQueen, but he just took a huge lick there from the true freshman, McKinney, delivering the blow. And there's, there's Russell Link going, <laughs> the senior. So I did make a mistake. We did not take the lead. We already had the lead, 14-13. We extend the lead out to eight points. Here's Makovich. Going up the middle for a first down here. Scott Thomas is going to get on the outside for another first down. So now Denver Tech is continuing to push the football downfield on us on this weak defense. And we can't oh. make tackles. And they are set up with about a minute 20 left to go. And Napoleon McQueen going to punch it in for a touchdown. Now they're two points away from tying the game. Yeah, good push up front by this offensive line, and they decide to go for it. Makovich under center, gonna flip it into the end zone, digs on the coverage, no dice there. And on third and two, Hicks oh, baby. just oh. evades the defender, and he's gonna get pushed out of bounds to Ardmore with the chance to pick up some points here before that. Yep, 57 seconds left, and that's a pretty darn good play call right there. Try to get, try to use their aggressiveness against them there. Here's a pass complete to Zach Flores up the middle, third and six. Hicks firing out to the right and right over top of the corner's head. And now a wide open running lane for Xavier Wiggins, guys. We went down the field in 57 seconds. Not even that. 31 seconds we went down the field and scored a touchdown. That was madly efficient. And now we're back up by eight points now again. All right, Armour with the ball to start here. Picking up another first down. Vinny Peck, top receiver so far in the game for... The Thunderwolves, and we got third and one situation going to Wiggins Ooh. with a nice little spin there. He seems to do that all the time. Gets it just outside the red zone here. Got a little play action. Hicks Nothing rolling open. out. Nothing open, but he finds Leandro Ransom on the shortstop throw right there, and he's been wild. He's been he's been so accurate, so wildly accurate. All right, Hicks sacked for a huge loss there. It's gonna be Jeremiah Pope on the sack and you're going screen to pick up a few yards and JK Johnson only gets the one. So it's up to Snyder. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Pretty That's terrible play calling by my by my part. I don't I mean you go basic basically a screen and basically forgetting that your kicker sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, Trey Day comes in to kick a little bit more. Jake Wood though, after Armour gets the football back. Starts rolling up the middle, and now you have second and three. Back to Jake Wood. So far, your MVP, maybe, today. Yeah, he's been getting a lot of work so far in this game, in this crucial, crucial game for us. And here is Hicks. Ooh, he might have been able to toss it right over, do a little Shinovsky play there to Wiggins, who was doing a little bit of the crossing right there. But he elected just to take it and run. Third and seven now after this three-yard loss. And are we looking for Jake Wood here? Are we looking for Jake Wood? Ooh. We are, but it almost gets picked off by Marquise Cleveland. And we're going to have to settle for a field goal. So now we're up 11, 19 to 30. It's kind of a weird football score right now, but Makovich is going to try to do his best here to drive down this Denver Tech rush offense for another score. But this is not going to happen on this drive. Go Just kidding. It. They're going for fourth and five here. And a pass Whoa, complete. That's gutsy. Wow. And Hushka's going to score. No. Denver Tech makes you pay for that. Uh, it's not the greatest coverage in the world, but, man, that took a lot of guts to run on fourth down. And they're going for two again here and try to pick up those points. And they do get them back to Woodstrom. So now you have a three-point cushion, and Wiggins is stuffed on second down. Just wasn't any running room right there, guys. They had, he had nothing. Third and two, and here's Jake Wood. Oh, the little move. Oh, he's got, he's got a lane. Can he go? He's not going to get past the 30-yard line, but I got a 36-yard rush. Second and five. Play action, little rollout here. Back over to Jake Wood, who's been just money all game long for us guys. The senior, the team captain. We're leaning on him 
heavily here. And Wiggins reading the blocking perfectly, gets in for a 13 yard touchdown. It's gonna be 37-27, Ardmore. Late in the fourth quarter, we're up 10. We can put this game away as long as we play some good defense, which has been hard to come by for this unit. Here's Brewer up the middle. Denver Tech down to their last gasp right here. They do push the ball downfield, but they got two minutes on the clock. Going to Woods from the tight end, bounces off one tackle. Gets inside the 15, so now Denver Tech going underneath to McQueen. Can he get in the end zone? No, down at the two yard line. And first and goal. Ah, oh, had him. Man, totally him. missed him right there. Sometimes you just gotta let the CPU make the tackle. Yeah. If, you're, if your angles are off, you're not going to make those tackles. Here it is. Yep. Oh, Vinny Peck. got a hop. He got the bounce. He did get the bounce. Vinny Peck's going the wrong way. Don't fumble the football, please, God. So we got a job to do here. A minute 30 left to go. Hicks going to take this on a third and seven. Gets the first down. Denver Tech uses their final timeout. And that's it. That's the game. Ardmore gets the W. And Xavier Wiggins is your player of the game. Congratulations, you beat a quality football I team here. Whoa, hey, accusations. Remember, he was telling me that my that my strength of schedule in the preview video sucked. And now we-, we Not anymore. <laughs> we're not anymore. So Denver Tech falls, and Ardmore remains number one for yet again another week. Let's go check out Shreveport against Nebraska State. The Shreveport team is going to be hungry here. They are trying to bounce back. They got leveled last week against Denver Tech. Shinoski getting hauled down by Cookston again. And so far, making some good plays on D. Here's third and 17. Shinoski floats one to oh, no. Anderson, and it's picked off. And that's about as bad of a first drive as we can have. That's not good, man. It's no, not it's good. good. Here's Kerry Ashley handing the ball to Seidel Riggins, oh. who's going to get the first down. So, you know, I, pri I prided myself on my run defense. And last couple weeks, we've been... Having, having some issues. Pretty shoddy. Pretty shoddy at this Just point. Just a little bit. It's going to move to third and ten here after a one-yard pickup. Ashley dropping back, and he is going to fire up the middle. Oh. oh, wow. Travis Jackson, custom recruit, going to sit right there at the goal line, make this catch in traffic, and finds himself into the end zone. You guys were going for the pick here. Well, but I had Brathwaite, and I pressed Y, and that's a great view. But he just didn't jump for the ball, and Dixon's yelling at him. <laughs> Like, as as I was, as I was. Here's Derek Smith getting the first down. So, you know, bad first drive. We're talking about Bench and Shinoski. No, no, not yet. Third and six, though, going to outside to Shane Pryor. And he's going to get about 22 on that play. It's a good pickup. I love that route, that that outpost route. It's well, a very it's a good money route. route. It's a good route. 344 left to go here, doing a little skip and a jump. 306 left to go. Derek <clears throat> Smith gets the reception, but not the first down. He guys are going for it on fourth. Landon Wade. No risks. No Being risks. Taken. Second and ten. Shinoski. Nobody's open. You gotta extend the play. And oh what mm, catch made. Cody Joseph. Second and goal with a flip to prior, so the decision to go for fourth down. Gonna pay off as we tie up the ball game. Shinoski up to 66 yards now with a score. And here's Ashley going to Riggins again. Uh oh. No surprise there. Riggins Ooh. gets flipped over, but he's going to pick up 12 on that carry. First and 10. Riggins going up the middle. Watch this. Little shimmy is shake. Oh, nice. He's going to take it all the way to the left for 22. And he's, he's probably up past the 50 yard mark right now, I would assume. Rob Jackson gets the call here on third and five, no third and four, and loses a yard. So they're gonna have to settle for a field goal. All right, Kimberlin with a huge catch, but this is gonna get a call back on pass interference on the offense because we are running a screen and Coach Cuss field. tells the referee what he thinks of that call. But LaBelle with a nice cut to the left is gonna get the first down. So he gets all those yards back. We're gonna skip ahead here. We got a fourth <sighs> down opportunity. And going to Kimberling, great play there, made by Johnson. Dang, that sucks. Look at, I mean, look at that. He was right on it. He was right on it. So Shreveport in business, and Ashley under pressure going to Jay Balmer, the tight end. We're flailing all over the field. Gonna get 21 on that catch. First and 10 here. Is he going back to Balmer? Yes, he is. And he goes inside the five 
32 yards for the tight end. Custom recruit tight end. And Seidel Riggins is going to score. He just set Nebraska State up, fall right into the blocker's hands, guys. And Shreveport takes the 10-point lead right now. This is um, not what I predicted here. I thought you guys were going to show up. We never show up on schedule. (laughs) Vivaldi, huge catch inside the five-yard line. Picks up 39. We felt like taking a risk right there. Not sure what we saw. He maybe had one step on the defender, and we exploited it, and Hargrove's going to score as Braddock cannot get in there to make the tackle. So now we are back in business. Two minutes left in the half. Ashley running draw to Riggins, and Shanka going to corral him down, and he's starting to get pumped up too. Third and 11 screen gets busted. Shanka, just watch, attention. Just watches the football fall to the ground. Could add a pick six right there. Second and four, going to Smith again. He's got a bunch of short to mid-range catches. Schnowski rolling left, cuts it upfield. Oh, He's got a, a lot miss. of room. Make a man miss. Oh, he not kind risking of it. chickened out a little not bit. Not against Braddock, we're not going to risk it. You got 12 seconds. And we got a touchdown there to Pryor, and he wasn't looking for the ball. Third and three, we're going option to Wade, and he's going to fall into the end zone. And the dogs... Wow. Taking the lead into the half. Pretty good finish there for I would Gonsu. S- I would say that that pickup after that penalty really helped you guys yeah, out. Yeah, that was big. Brathwaite this time gets the deflection. You got Kerry Ashley starting to throw it now under pressure inside the pocket. Goes to Marks. Okafor with the tackle, but he picks up 15. Now they are running a little <laughs> fade route Come or something on. over there. Come. And he floats it to Zyre Sullivan. I want you, obviously I have a I have a favoring for you guys, Nebraska State, but I mean, come on, Kerry Ashley, what are you, what are you doing, man? That's not where you want to throw that route. No. Not where you want to throw that football. Throw it deeper, man. You got some arm strength to, to go. Come on, that's ridiculous. Shreveport fans, you can't you can't accept this. This is this is BS. Well, hey, we got a third and four situation here. And Chinoski is going to roll out to the right, but he's going to throw it away. Nobody got open. So we got to settle for that field goal. And Chinoski will hit it. So now we take a touchdown lead here as we move along late in the third. And this time, oh. Sullivan again might have had a pick, but did not read it that throw correctly. And Ashley moving him downfield. Here's Riggins for a first down. He's starting to cut us up now. He's probably well over the 100-yard mark, guys, right now. And look at this move right there to the left. He's going to get 10 on that play, and he's going to give way here to Rob Jackson. Touchdown, Vulture. Yep. Go figure. Happens all the time. We have ourselves a tie ball game here. This is Ryan Watson right before the third, the final play. Give him a block. Touchdown. (laughs) That was the last play of the third quarter. We were just running, going to run one more play. I put in Ryan Watson on a hunch, and he actually just takes it all the way to the house. Look at the blocking on this play. Ooh. Sealed them off. And then over there. Oh, oh the nice little, little. Yeah. No block in the back. He just walked right in front of him and cut him off. Cut off his route there. That's what you got to do. That's what I like to see. Your teammates help you out. Sometimes the CPU teammates, they, they're oblivious. They don't help you out at all. So here's Seidel Riggins again, guys, and he's going to do the same thing, except not get in the end zone. Same thing as Ryan Watson. But watch this run, man. He He's doing his best Andre Wingo impersonation here, making these little cuts, following the blockers through. Here's Jackson going to get it. dropped at the one-yard line. That was Travis Jackson. And then Rob Jackson comes through. For the zero yard touchdown. Yep, touchdown Vultures. Tied ball game, folks. We got ourselves a game, and Jacob Canatella's pumping him up on the sidelines. He's still staying active. Good teammate. In, in it. Shinovsky up the middle. Goes for about 14. Going to have about three and a half left to go here. Three minutes, actually. Hargrove. Nothing much doing there. I haven't Four. seen LaBella a whole lot. Oh, my God. Tucci picks it off. Something happened here where... The ball did not go where I wanted it to because Pryor, for some reason, just cut way to the inside. I had the line, I had it straight, and Cust is talking to Shinovsky, but something did not happen correctly there. So we can still get a stop and get the ball back. 
But Balmer goes for six. We got third and four. There oh, go draw. Wow, that's so Riggins. weak. That's so weak. What is Shreveport thinking? I don't know. Minute and a half now. Hargrove gets hauled down for third and 11. So we might have overtime on our hands, boys and girls. Unless 45 Shinos seconds. janoski has got space. Hero and he's gonna ball. Take it. He's Hero gonna ball. take it. They should have had somebody covering the sidelines, somebody in the flat, somebody spying him maybe. 30 seconds and we hit Derek Smith open up the middle. Still out of field goal range though. We need to pick up some yards here. Yep. 17 seconds to Hargrove and he gets the little move. Dives forward. Get one more play in there with one timeout. Hargrove gets nine. That is going to do it. We broke the will of Shreveport in this game. And Janoski makes it. He almost pulled it just a little bit, guys. But honestly, what the heck is Shreveport doing? Coach LaDuca, you can't make those play calls, That's man. That's way too conservative. They had me on the ropes. They could have won that game if they picked up the first down. Ashley did not play very badly. He made the one bad interception. But other than that, he really did fine against us. How do you take the ball out of his hands on a third and six with the game on the line? I don't know. I really don't know. It's not good. They're trying to pull a fast one on they us, need and to, it didn't work. They need to ask some questions out in Shreveport. I think I they, they have been asking questions, but they need to ask. Let's more. go to this game here. It's the Battle of the Basin. Odessa State versus Midland State. That's the official rivalry name. Battle of the Basin. First down pickup by Brian Parks. We got Cameron Willis, who's just slinging the ball all over the field. Figures to be a shootout. Oof, Texas size shootout here in Midland. Teams not very far from each other. Heated rivalry. Willis, though, is going to take a huge sack here from Witherspoon. And the field goal is no good because Odessa's kicker's terrible. Walk on true freshman, it's terrible. Here's Dexter Whiteside. He's gonna get sacked, so maybe I'm selling the defenses short a little bit. Let's see here, third and seven, Whiteside. Bombing it. Oh, what, what a, a catch. catch. Whoa. Dang. By Colton, Colton Yo. Yo. Yeah, of course, a uh, custom recruit would make that catch. Only, only custom recruits make that catch. But look at Dexter Whiteside, guys. Again, with more screw-ups, he's got the opportunity to make some points here yeah. for his offense and just just throws the football That's away. Jason Kelly's first interception of his career. Paris Austin, nice pick up there. Second and two. Oh! Got him. Touchdown, Paris Austin for 38 yards. Huge touchdown catch for Austin Willis. Eight of eight to open up that drive. It's Midland State already down by seven points and now a deep shot. Here to wide receiver Ulysses Neely for 54. So Midland State responds. Whiteside matching Cameron Willis right now. He's seven of eight. Charging again. Now are the Dust Devils, and this one's gonna sail. Let's see if they resort to the field goal unit. Yes, this one's wow. This one's gonna be just Ooh. barely. And he's so pumped up that he Good. made a field goal. It's like yes, I finally made my three points. Thank God. Look at Jesse Tyson right here for six. Yeah, and we have to skip a lot of action because I'll just spoil this right now, man. There's a lot of points that are going to be scored in this game. So you guys don't need to see meaningless yards. You want to see touchdowns. You want to see the points right. being scored here. So Midland State is going to end up getting three here. Wow. And Paris Austin just pulled over a defender. He's going to go for 22 right here. Second and 16. Karen Wills firing out to the left to Pat Dowdell. You can always tell... That is Pat Dowdell there with the hand warmer and the towel. Right. Here's Cameron Willis firing out to the right and a touchdown to Doug Williams. And you can always tell Doug Williams he's got no gloves on those hands. 18 of 20 for Cameron Willis right now with about two and a half left. He can spin it, boys. He can spin it. Here's Dexter Whiteside again at 204. This time running play action. Is he going bombs away? Oh, Got wide him. open. Dylan Fowler, guys. You know what? He is one of the more electric receivers that this team has. And it shows right there. He reminds me a lot of Deshaun Jackson. Seriously. Yeah. It makes a lot of people miss in the Win. open field. And then that deep bomb right there is going to be 17-17. So we're going back and forth, back and forth here. 12 yards to Jabari McCollum. 17-17 game here. A minute 29 oh. and a big time sack. Bull rush by Weatherspoon. You got third and 21. 
this one's no dice. Curtis Austin does make the catch for nine, so he pads those stats, but hey, look at the rushing yards. Negative 28 to 13. <laughs> oh, those sack yardages, guys. Here's Dexter Whiteside going deep. Oh. Guys, the offenses are just rolling right now. Ulysses Neely for 31. Third and six, six minutes to go here. And a pass out to the left. Gonna be complete to Colton Yo, but not gonna get the first down. He's gonna run out of bounds. And the field goal and kicker goes missing. Second and 18. Don't recruit kickers. Bombs away. Can he break it loose? Nope. It's gonna be Javari McCollum, the senior, the veteran, four year player. Odessa State now inside the 30 going screen, third down screen God. to Gibson, and he's going to step out of bounds. I say he had blockers out in front. This should, should, should be a makeable this. field goal here. Barely. Barely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're shaking here a little bit. Shaking in our boots. There's a pass complete to Dylan Fowler out to the left for 17. He's having a huge game right now. Third and inches, they're going to like to throw it, and they've got some... Dylan Fowler action yet again yeah. for another first down. Third and three, play action. That's a pretty good call, but there doesn't seem to be anybody open as Whiteside actually is going to fire. Oh, mm. wow, they went for the pick, and Blake Storm going to come up with the catch. You know, and Whiteside's been taking a lot of flack Ooh. for his performance, but he's come up really big on third downs. People talking about him turning the ball over, but he's starting to come out of his cage, and he's doing just fine. So I like what Dexter Whiteside is doing. Yeah, he's looking pretty solid here, guys. And and don't don't get too in love with the narrative about Odessa State's defense and think that Whiteside is just <clears throat> ripping up that defense because he's he's having a great game. You can't take that away from him. And then this big time sack here on fourth and three. They went. They decided to go for this mm, to extend that coming. lead out. They they went decided to go for that. And it's Whoa. not, not going to happen for him. But would they do get an interception. Cameron Willis with 6.53 left to go. Troy Simon stays in front of the ball. Man. The freshman cornerback. Challenged him. And Whiteside's there to congratulate him. So with six minutes, Midland's looking for the nail oh. in the coffin. I got, got him. It. Dylan Fowler with the huge catch at the back of the end zone. He gets the one foot down. And this is a one-on-one. -on -one. And just a just bomb, just a missile. There's actually two people in that coverage. And Whiteside said, you know what? Screw it. But look at the score it. It's 31 to 20, 556 to go. And Odessa's now threatening. They're up past the 30-yard line. They're getting totally outgained. You guys saw the offensive production numbers. Totally outgained. Here's a Nance. Pass complete to Nance for 15. They're still in this game, though. They do need to convert for a touchdown right here and get a stop on defense which so far has been easier said than done this time you're spin it out to nan oh. to rosario out at the one yard line that's bogus they bring the cornerback blitz though got it and nance is gonna get it for a touchdown they are back in it guys oof 37 for know. 40 go for two and make it a three point got they, to. they do go for it and here's willis he's gonna get in wow gutsy gutsy call by willis to just take it on in getting right past Willie Grant and other big defenders for Midland State. And oh no, no. Whiteside strikes again. With the late turnover. Oh, you can't have it, man. You can't have it. He's pissed off by himself. That's Kelly oh. again with the INT. So he's coming up huge today. Four minutes left. So plenty, plenty of time for Willis. Wow. This one goes to Nance down at the 20. He gives Odessa another shot. Here's a pass complete to the left. Got to cut up field. They're going to give him the spot. Whoa. They're going to give him the spot. Some controversy here going outside. Gets Paris Austin out at the two. One yard line. Just kidding. The one yard line. Stevie Norton going to get in for a touchdown. And this game is yeah. back to eat. Well, the it's battle 35 of the You want to talk about a tight game? This is it here, man. Midland State needs some magic here on this final drive. Whiteside going to slip this one out and almost going to get the first down there. Jesse Tyson for nine yards. So we got second and one here. We are under two minutes to go. Whiteside's got... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, Dylan Fowler down at the one-yard line. 153. Oh, we get a... What is this? Is that a false start? 
It's a false start. They're going to have to move backward. They're a yard away from the lead. Now they're six yards away. Oh, that's brutal. And a shortened field, that is brutal. First and goal. White side. Oh, let's go back. So now they go back eight more yards. It's going to be second and goal from the 14. And a doink. They can't connect. They're wasting their downs. And they run screen, third down screen. Oh my God, that, stupid play calling. That play call is just absolutely terrible. Okay, fourth and goal, here we go, boys. <laughs> Whiteside dropping back. He's gonna fire it into the end oh, zone, and it's just look. tipped. It's just tipped by Drew Howe. Oh, what a play. He's looking for Colton Yo, right? Woo! Yep, in the back of the end Looks zone. like that. And just like that, guys, Odessa State gonna get this first down. Midland State uses their last timeout. Stan Leach, good coaching job. And he's gonna Cameron win again. Wins. He won again. <laughs> Battle of the Basin goes to Odessa State. Wow. And they're starting to have Midland's number here. Midland, their season officially now on the ropes with Dexter Whiteside not coming up clutch. Willis only threw four incompletions today. Unreal. He's unconscious. That's in this, in this offense. That's pretty impressive. Now let's go here to this game. We got huge game here. Number two versus number eight. We got me Callen going up against the ACU Spartans. ACU coming off of a loss to Little Rock, and it's raining out there in Springdale, Arkansas. Should favor McAllen, in my opinion, with the run game. You would think Slippery so. Yeah. Free football here, but they're, they're going to do this little extension of the run game with these screens. Big time. Aaron Penner for 31. He gets these bunch of these big plays, guys. Yeah. AC, you've got to come out strong here. There's coming off of a major dud against Little Rock, like we talked about. Only 17 points. They had the yards, but the points were not there. Russell going to Ireland. It's a first down. There's another little short intermediate throw that you can get the extra yards after the catch. Second and four here. Going to tr probably try to do the same thing, I'd assume. A little crossing route there and looks like Jackson Lundhall with the reception second and goal here and firing to the end zone wide open is Jackson Lundhall again and he's going to put the first points up on the board for ACU 6 of 6 for 75 yards is Joe Russell now let's take a look at McCallan's offense with Harkless Blair running the show third and inches and running a speed option and they're going to get a huge stop ACU with that stop Mitchell Hensky. Love up. this guy. He makes plays, man. He's a playmaker for this defense. Jackson Lundhall, I like this guy. Yeah. This is one of my favorite receivers coming into this next been draft. Pretty, pretty steady, quiet receiver. Doesn't make a lot of waves, but he's always been very good for ACU. A four-year starter, Jackson Lundhall. Second and seven here, and a little floater to Jackson Lundhall. It's going to get 13 on that little float. Floater. It's kind of a Hunter Renfro type. Yeah. I like that comparison. Third and five. Here's pass complete to Timmy Federhart. And he's only going to get four. Fourth and inches. They like to kick the field goal. And Armand Hammer just came in and laid the boomstick on Andres Buckley. He should be in the NFL. Armand Hammer? I feel like he should be oh, in the yeah, NFL. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's like he's just a beast, guys. He's a workout warrior for ACU. Andres Buckley can't get the first down. ACU back with the football. 10-0. Here's a pass complete out to the left. And bust off tackle. It's Alex it's, Jefferson. Alex Jefferson makes some good plays there. And Joe Russell going to the end zone. That's Jared Kirk for the 21 yard strike. And it is 17 to nothing. They've already got as many points as they had in the last game in the first quarter. Yep. Three possessions, three scores. McAllen needs desperately to respawn here. Harkless Blair gets 10. Want to see Harkless run the ball, and here's a little bit more of that. Oh, Cuts nice, up field. Nice moves. Keeping his footing in these these wet conditions. Field doesn't look too sloppy, but it's holding up. Yeah. Here's Blair again, finding a lane. He gets inside the 10. McAllen now up to 94 yards rushing in the first quarter, mind you. And McAllen looking good in those the, <laughs> the green Tabasco paint. style, you know, the green paint. Second and goal, flipping fields here. And Derek Wade can't not get any positive yardage on that play. Third and goal. They're going to be throwing here. And Harkless Blair going to oh. throw it to the end zone. It's going to be picked off. Not even giving your receiver a chance right there. You know what? He has not been able to throw the football a whole lot this season because of this offense. And you got to ask yourself, is it because of the reps? The limited amount of reps? Like, why, did not, why didn't he see that? 
We get a fumble here on the slick turf, and Joe Russell fumbles the ball, but it's going to be recovered by ACU. So Washington comes in and nice little bull rush creates move. that fumble. But McAllen needs to hold him to a field goal, at least here. It's a stay in the game. We got a floater pass caught by Timmy Federhart. He's getting some action today. And gets the first down. Now they run a read option. Russell's going to cut it up the field. Harris can't make the tackle. Russell scores, and it's 24 to nothing. Not good. Not good and at all. The AC fans are trying to entertain themselves by throwing up a, just an innocent person and a poncho. <laughs> Second and nine. Here's Buckley. Buckley busts it loose. He's going downfield. That's a huge pickup. 54 for the running back. It's nice to it's see a custom him. recruit. It's nice to see him kind of break out a little bit because we haven't seen him have very many big runs. Yeah, he's had a few, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And there's Buckley going to take it into the house for a three-yard score. We were talking about Buckley as like maybe being a Heisman guy, the beneficiary of the offense, but really it's been Heartless Blair doing the majority of the touchdowns, and Blair's going to get two points. Interesting call there. They're probably like, well, you know, we're going to have to do this anyway, so let's try to pick up a field goal over the course of the game by going for two. It's a smart call. I mean, Leroy Jackson's a smart head coach. Yeah, it's a good call. And Kirk is going to get tackled shy of the yard to gain. Good play there. So McAllen trying to make a comeback here. Trying to give ACU a little scare. And that's a big catch up the middle for Bryce Maddox, the tight end. Big body tight end. About a minute 40 left now. And they bring oh. some huge pressure. And that's Hinsky again off the blitz. Yeah. Right off the sides and up the outside, and then Blair gonna run into his own man and can't bust off of it. It's Boris B, third and 25 right now. Blair steps up into the pocket, makes oh. a solid throw, but you know, Powell took an absolute lick right there. And it's James gonna Washington with the down. End the half, 24 to 8. ACU up 16 points, and guys, time of possession, seven minutes even. Passing yards favor ACU, rushing yards. Right up there with McAllen. And oh. oh, no! That was Brady just dropping a wide open pass. I mean, slick conditions. Couldn't hang on, but ACU's having no problems with the, the sticky gloves there. Alex Jefferson going for 36 downfield. Oh, man, but you got to wonder what that's going to do with the morale for McAllen if ACU scores right here. But fumble! Hey, fumble! Fumble loose! Fumble Ruski. Joe Russell loses the football again given the conditions, but luckily his teammates are going to help pick it back up here. Penner with the stiff arm. You guys see that stiff yep. arm? And there's Kleck trying to make a huge field goal. That's a 45-plus yard field goal right there, boys and girls. In the rain. Kleck is legit. He's special. He's special. He's a special team. Harkless going up the middle for eight. McAllen now uh, really on the ropes here late in the third. Need a touchdown. Really bad. He's going to get 18, not going down, second and five. And he's throwing to the end zone yeah. and into the end zone is Abraham Young, the athlete. All right, so the question is now, I mean, they don't go for two. They went for one. It's going to be 15 to 27, so they're down by 12. ACU challenging again the defensive secondary. And you got to wonder, what, what, where is the defense for McAllen? McAllen's had this great defense all year long, and the conditions have favored them. Yep. And they're nowhere to be found right now. Leonard David going to get six. First down, ACU. First and ten. They're threatening here to score another touchdown, and they find another one. The Jackson Lund Hall for ten. Got the foot down. Joe Russell again having an, just an unconscious game, much like we saw Cameron Willis earlier today. Just very low on the incompletion front. Derek Wade. And Wade's going to score from 25 yards out. So McAllen, only 440 to play with, though. So they are in desperation mode here. Russell on third and 10. Going short. And McAllen gets a stop on Jefferson. So I thought he was going to bust that off and get that first down. So have the ball back. They got a chance. Number two, McAllen on the ropes right now, guys. Second and 15. Minute 55 left to go. Blitz is coming. Pressure is coming. And Blair is going to go down for an eight yard loss. It's a sack. Adonis Caesar coming up with the huge tackle for a loss right there. Nice job, nice spin move right there. The gotta go like for it. Jason Pierre-Paul right there. Fourth and 23, you gotta go for it, and the pass is deflected by Lincoln Chancellor. And that, my friends, 
is gonna do it. Or will it? Aaron Penner scores. They're rubbing it in. They're rubbing it in. A little bit here at the yeah. end. Wow, 41-22. They didn't, didn't have to do that. But, you know, Penner wanted the touchdown. No, that's a, that's one of those play calls that you make when you're trying to impress the voters. Send a message. Yeah. I think ACU sent a message today. They are back. What a game. Arnmore secures that number one spot heading into week number 10, beating Denver Tech for the second time hosting them. Second time in this dynasty, Denver Tech is going to fall to seventh. They did score a late touchdown, though, to make this one pretty close, but 494 to 412. The running game, though, is what did it for you. Yeah, it's a pretty total opposite type of thing here, guys. If you guys have remembered, Ardmore's offense was usually predicated on the pass. Denver Tech's was with the run, but we we took it to him in both aspects of the football game here. 82% for John Hicks. He was very efficient. 106 yards for Xavier Wiggins. Hicks got involved with 64. Vinny Peck had a big game. Jake Wood had a big game out of the backfield. Zach Flores. And then we get that touchdown by Peck. Wiggins again got involved yeah. with the passing game. So we spread the ball around just like we know how to do. And our defense played big when they had to, with that, especially with that fumble recovery by Russell Link. And yeah. the fumble caused by McKinney, our linebacker, it was a pretty good showing on both sides of the football and very entertaining football game. Well, I thought Denver Tech probably should have aired it out a little bit more considering how well Makovich was throwing. McQueen had 13. They didn't get any yeah. other backs involved like Scott Thomas in this game. And then Hushka had two scores, but it just wasn't enough. Denver Tech, though, still well alive in the national title mix. Talk about this game here, 34-31. Well, you and I played in some really close games here this week. Yeah, you know, I, I assume might have a little bit of controversy here with the late run by Shinovsky. Nebraska State detractors will accuse me of cheesing the game. However, I refrained from doing that almost the entire game, and it was there on third down, <laughs> and I had to take it. You had it. to take it. It was a third down. It was a do-or-die situation. I had to take it. So... Pile on me if you want to. That's fine. Nebraska State wins by a field goal. Really got a good game from Shreveport mm -hmm. in this. It was good to see them rally around after getting shellacked by Denver Tech the week before. Kerry Ashley wasn't that bad. No. Nope. Another okay. interception, though, but he did he did okay. Yeah, and three, 362 for Shreveport. It's better than what they did last week. 182 for Janoski. Had the two turnovers. 71 yards rushing, though is really what, what helped us out. And we pitched in from the running back depth chart there with Hargrove, Watson, and Wade at fullback. And then receiving here, Pryor had the one touchdown. Didn't get Kimberling in there at all this week. But, you know, it was kind of just all over the board as far as the offensive production went. But we will take the W. Kerry Ashley, 12-16, 224. 75%. Decent yeah. game. Yeah. Especially yeah. early. First half, he played pretty well. Second half, didn't do too much. Seidel Riggins had 23 and a buck 24. How many oh, guys saw that coming? Probably not too many, because the our run defense has been so good over the course of the year. Really, the CPU never really runs the ball that That's effectively true. against yeah, us. Right. It's, but It seems like that with everybody. and It's like anybody you talk to. The, yeah. the CPU never has been able to run the football against the user. Right. But Seidel Riggins had a really good game. Travis Jackson with the 87. Jay Ballmer had 69. Mm -hmm. Not good. quite enough in a losing effort. This game was nuts. I mean, 35-31, yeah. you'd look at that and be like, oh, that's just a regular day at the Big 12 office. But considering the second half push for these offenses, guys, this was crazy, crazy. Three yeah. touchdowns by Odessa State. Unanswered. Unanswered, yes, to win the game. I mean, this is a great performance by this offense. Yeah, and you think you look at that two-point conversion, that's a big deal because Midland had it yep. and goal from the one, and then they go false start, and then they go backwards. And like to lose the game the way they did, that was a must-win game for this program. So many recruits on the line, <laughs> and they were a yard away from doing it, and they couldn't do it. They did outgain Odessa's 506 to 448. Whiteside threw two picks, though, and it wasn't 
just wasn't quite enough. He had 75% completion. He made some really good throws downfield to Fowler. Yeah, like they were exploiting Odessa's defense all day, but at the end of the day, wasn't quite enough. Cameron Willis was unconscious though, and this offense really suits him because it's like really high percentage throws, and that explains the completion percentage being where that's at. Yep. I mean, they don't ask him to to go way downfield. They will hit those strikes on occasion, but they're like a lot of bubble screens, a lot of slants, and a lot of dumping it off to Gibson. It's almost like a little bit of a Texas Tech offense. Yeah, it is what they run. Texas Tech play with. Uh, you see, like, Gibson with six catches, and Dowdell's always making little catches, too. And, but, yeah, I like what Williams, Parks, and Austin are doing. This receiving core, even when Willis is gone, they're going to be pretty good in the next few years. Amarillo takes down Camu. So Camu loses yet again. And this is another field goal margin of victory. Wow. This yeah, is, like, three of them in a row. Wait until you see who did all the damage here, because... 567 to 531. If you showed me that, I would be like, oh yeah, Camu won that. They had to have won, right? I don't know. 255 yards rushing for Kansas A&M. Bollinger six. had 416 and 6. So I talked about it. Camu is in a similar boat as Midland State with their secondary. They revamped the secondary. They got a lot of young faces in there. And when they're playing against these seasoned college players like you see in somebody like Rhett Bollinger or, but the story of the day players of the game is Jamil Carter and Orion Bradshaw and I'm talking this up to some kind of computer glitch because I don't understand well let's look at the receiver yeah let's just the rushing yeah. Bollinger okay yeah yeah sex okay great 18 catches nobody else was involved Quan had two so but why did Bradshaw get 18 catches? why did he get 18 for 292 and 4 and then if you go over to Camu and look at their numbers, we'll talk about Jace Freeman in the rushing game. Freeman was pretty clean. Dobbs with the two scores. Flores, pretty nice. And Jamil Carter was the only guy they were throwing to. 15 catches for 282. The only receiver with a catch. Flores out of the backfield and Keck tight end. I don't get it. I don't understand. So just back and forth, back and forth. Maybe it was just one of those games that will forever go down in history. It'll be a lost game that nobody will ever remember and really nobody yeah, ever talk about. seen it. Yeah. And then it'll be like, oh, that was the game. That was that game where they went back Jamil and forth. Carter back versus the Ryan Bradshaw. Exactly. This game not too competitive. ECU really took McAllen to task. And they rubbed it in there a little bit at the end. But McAllen really could not figure anything out offensively early. And you see with that 17-point first quarter... ECU, they got up 24-0, they just buried them. It, it was, was fast. It was a bounce-back win for ECU, for sure. After losing to Little Rock, you kind of thought that, you know, their backs were up against the wall. It's like you said in the preview video, you don't see them going to 1-2 and two in conference play. Yes. And McAllen obviously had a lot of things to play for here, too. So, I mean, they did their best, but ECU is still a good football team, guys. Yeah, and, and 400 yards later, Joe Russell went for 85%. Yeah. Like it's it's these quarterbacks insane. are unconscious today. Penner had the one touchdown there. One all had himself a game here. Two touchdowns. Kirk scored once as well. See Ireland and Jefferson, some of your, your guys. Timmy Federhart even got on the board. Freshman from the live stream. Harkless had 118-2. and two. It's a lot more production through the air than he has had in the last couple weeks. Yeah. Blair had 132. Buckley with 124. And then you look at the receivers at Abraham Young and Wade out of the backfield. McAllen, though, that's a tough loss to take in division. But they have a little bit of room. They still have some room to go. You know, ACU, they're playing Ardmore. McAllen still has yet to play Ardmore. And then you get all these landmines in there. I mean, ACU, they got to play Odessa State and Camu later. So, yeah, you know, this loss, is, they're not done yet. They are number eight. They're still in the thick of the national title race. Got him on the table now. And the last game, 48 to 17, Little Rock destroys Uba. They moved to two and six. Yeah, and the Buster Smith era did not get off to a very good start. Mm -hmm. As with 13:45 left in the first quarter, 46-yard pick six yeah. from Buster to a Smith. linebacker, and one minute left in the game. So it started bad and it ended bad. It's a good way to bookend it. 483 for Little Rock, four turnovers through the air. 
for Buster Smith, and they didn't even ask him to do that much. He was throwing late in the second half, but to start this game wasn't doing much, and went 11 of 35. I think uh, Todd Orlando gets either axed this season, or it's next year. Well, I mean, it's next year if yeah. they don't do if they don't improve on this. I mean, when they to... sign these contracts, sometimes if it's a complete disaster, they will cut you loose. But in college, it's hard because you're like, you got these the athletic directors writing the check, you know, for yeah. like four years, and they want to fire him and have a sunk cost and all that. So, yeah, they might have to stick with Orlando for another season and just pray that things get better. Let's see who did anything through the air. Simmons had 16. Mendoza had four. Let's see Gunner Rivers, 36 of 51 for 440 in three. Yeah, you think he put some doubters to rest there? Yeah, he is starting to come on with the rushing touchdowns on. Got Little Rock up to number 18 in the nation at 6-2, and two, and then Wilson had 133 through the air. So that's going to do it for week number 9. Yeah, so let's go and move on to week number 10. Do you have any takeaways for week number 9, actually? No. No? Other yeah, we already covered it. Man, you don't think Ardmore's win was impressive? It is impressive, but we get ACB can't... next week can't rest on your laurels here that's, that's true that's very very true so we're gonna get acu next week broken arrow get shreveport that's a weird game i'm not well, sure somebody what to, needs to win yeah these somebody's somebody's going to somebody's that <laughs> somebody needs to somebody's going to win well you don't know first that. you don't know that oh uh, it could be a tie just kidding just kidding not no, you football. can't tie a college football. I, I know somebody I, I is it. going to maybe win and <laughs> it'll be their first conference win of the season yes Woo-hoo! yeah mccallum midland that's the rivalry game not an official rivalry game but they do play each other every year and they don't like each other and we know how this one ended last season yep we draw odessa state so we have cameron willis ah. hosting us this week this is gonna be a lot the shinosky willis a lot of pride on the line in this one for both sides and they have beaten us before so it would not be the first time that Odessa beat us. And then Denver Tech at Camu Camu getting uh, desperate. Mm-hmm. It's good for them that Denver Tech is down a game in division, but Camu's got to win out and see what happens from there. But it's a big, I, yeah. It might be a bigger game for Camu than it is for Denver Tech. Honestly. Yes. I know losses are never good in college football because you don't have a lot of leeway and a lot of leash, especially in this competitive Big 12. And then you got Amarillo but, just sitting back and kicking back and watching the action. Yeah, they're, they're at home this week, and they're like, you know what, we're 7-1. and one. So, guys, it's going to be it for this episode. We'll see you guys in the next one. As always, peace.